we got everybody here, and we got our guests that are getting settled in. So uh, I think we can go ahead and call the meeting to order, Madam City Clerk. Better put my hat with my back too. Okay, so we'll do a Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. Uh, you can use it as you see fit. Uh, and uh, let's see, uh, Mrs. Loa, could you lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance, please? Just come up. Just, you can come up right now. Hands over your heart. Ready? I pledge of pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag. Of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Hey, um, City Clerk, can we have a roll call, please? Mayor Hoffbauer? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Carrillo? Present. Councilmember Bentoncourt? Here. Councilmember Bishop? Here. Councilmember Loa? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Okay, next item is uh, Judge? You're on, sir. We're going to have the uh, ceremonial oath of office administered by the Honorable Judge. Mario Barrera of uh, Mr. Loa. Don't get too far ahead of me, Judge. <laughs> hey, I, I, I'd like to say something before I do this. I've known Richard for many, many years. Um, I came to the Allen Valley in 1995, and he was already here. He has a long history of um, community service work. He was doing community service when I first met him in 1995. He then um, was uh, doing uh, uh, work as a defense attorney. He then was called upon by Governor Schwarzenegger to be, uh, go to the state and be on some committees there. Again, community service, and then he came back. And now he, I see that he's now a council member again, which again shows that he has dedicated his life to community service, and I am honored uh, to give him the oath. Thank you so much, let's uh, start. Raise your right hand. I, Richard Loa. I, Richard Loa. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Upon which I am about to enter. Upon which I am about to enter. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yes, go right ahead. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank Judge uh, Barrera. And, uh, of course, having worked with him, uh, he, you were in the public defender's office. I was in the alternate public defender's office. But we also came into contact when you were part of a homeowners association. And you came and made presentations with council that time. Yeah. So it's both on a professional level as well as being a council member that we uh, knew each other. I want to say that I'm privileged uh, to, to uh, have been appointed as a representative for Council District 2, the district that uh, Mayor Hoffbauer has vacated. Uh, there are many items that we will be addressing 
in that district that are important and very close to my heart, as obviously that is the district that I live in. Uh, yesterday we did a tour, the mayor and I, of the West District to uh, point out physically the things that are, uh, that are of concern to him and to me. Uh, I was very pleased to see uh, when we went by uh, 25th West and Lake Elizabeth Road that the Amor Amargosa Creek water deep recharge is again being, uh, it's actually being started. There's some ground movement there and so on. We have, as a consequence of the recession, had a vacancy factor in Palmville among our businesses. And uh, we want to do everything to encourage that we fill up those vacancies, including at the mall. There are park obligations that are due to the Western District that I will uh, vigorously pursue so that those are fulfilled. And there are roadways and connectivity with our transportation system that I'll be working on as well. There's many other issues. I just want to highlight those. I want to work with the Sheriff's Department. I am part of the Boosters Club, and we'll be continuing to work there with the Sheriff's and all other agencies. Thank you again, Judge. Right, um, thank you and uh, welcome aboard, Richard. Thank you. Um, so we have uh, item 5.1, presentation by the Grupo as uh, Ritual Azteca, uh, uh, Del L. All right, come on, I'm only so good at this, okay? Help me with that, will you? So it is from the ritual, Grupo Ritual Azteca del Sur de Milagros de Palmdale. Right, that's exactly what I was thinking. So, I'm sorry, I'm trying, but I just, I, when I get abbreviations, I just get messed up. So, uh, and I'm going to ask uh, um, Robert uh, Alvarado from our water board if he can um, uh, introduce this. Uh, he's had a few, uh, a little statement, just so everybody understands what's happening here. And uh, um, the, the folks had contacted him, and he had contacted me about this, and kind of helped uh, get this going here. So, Robert? Okay. So, um... Basically, this uh, group, Ritual Azteca del Sol, del Señor de los Milagros, um, is a group from Pandel. Um, Azteca dancers, they're the, representing the great country of uh, Mexico and their heritage and the culture. And within that tradition, uh, sorry, Mayor, you asked me to read this, but um, um, I think that I can do okay. more justice with uh, yes, sir. That is. And so basically they, uh, they have this ritual in Mexico and also in other uh, Latin American countries, including mine, El Salvador, where we have uh, dancers that perform a small uh, ritual to bless uh, new administrations, new presidents, new mayors, uh, like in our case. So they approach me that they were interested in blessing, because they're all living in Pandel. They're citizens of Pandel, and they would like to be part of uh, this community and to basically bless the entire administration, not just the mayor, but the entire council, and wish the entire uh, city council of Pandel uh, the very best, uh, not only in 2019, but uh, uh, you know, in, in other years as well. So um, I'd like to introduce the group director, Karina. So Karina, puede pasar adelante, por favor. Oh. Okay. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Karina Manzano. 
a mi grupo, se llama Ritual Azteca del Señor de los Milagros, de aquí de la ciudad de Pante. Estamos muy agradecidos hoy y bendecidos por hacernos la invitación y estar aquí con ustedes representando esta bella cultura y nuestra tradición. Muchas gracias a todos, Dios los bendiga, estamos aquí muy contentos y a todos, muchas gracias, él es Dios. She said she's from Palmdale and she was honored to uh, be invited and be placed in the agenda to perform and that uh, she's uh, happy to be here in honor.
John, were you good with uh, your pictures? Y'all good with your pictures? Okay, all right. So, again, I, I, I'd like to thank the group and uh, the, the young lady there, Robert. Please extend our sincere appreciation to the whole group, especially the young lady and a drummer, because I think he worked up a sweat. So. <laughs> that was amazing, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Yeah, that was fantastic. Told you we are going to do some things different, huh? <laughs> Business as usual. Yeah. All right. So, um, Jesse, you're up. He's like, how am I going to follow that? Our <laughs> <laughs> dogs are probably a nervous wreck at this point. <laughs> wow. That was great. Well, oh, tonight I have Princess. She's a five-year-old, short-haired chihuahua. I think she's more of a dachshund chihuahua than pure chihuahua. But she came into our care on the uh, 25th of December as a stray. And uh, right now she's uh, very shy. And once uh, she gets to warm up to you, she's really cuddly. Uh, I was surprised with the drums going uh, that she just shook a little bit but wasn't terrified we were too. like most dogs get, you know. The giant snouts over there, he just slept through most of it. <laughs> but uh, she did really well. So I'm pretty sure that she would be a great companion for, you know, older kids and uh, somebody who just wants to cuddle with their dog when they get home from work. She's available, she's uh, clit, uh, fixed, she's got all her shots, uh, she's also chipped, and right now she's living in uh, 1401, is her uh, temporary home right now, so if you're really looking for a cute little shy dog, this is the perfect one for you. Thanks sir. Hey, thank you Jesse.
No, but, uh, these, these volunteers over there really put their heart into the program, and uh, uh, these little guys right here, uh, if we don't step up, it's not good for them, okay? So we can uh, do the right thing. We've had a number of dogs that have gotten adopted. Some of them have, you know, practically, uh, they've had to wrestle to get the right uh, owner, as everybody was uh, so impressed with them. So, uh, but uh, it's really a good thing what these folks are doing over there, these volunteers. If you want to help, go over there and see Jesse and his supervisors over there. Um, they can uh, help get you hooked up if you want to put some time in and help the community out and help out the little critters, right? right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, thanks. All right, take care. Thank you. So there you go. Hey, here you go. One time, one time offer here. High Desert Obedience. If you if you adopt this little doggy, they'll give you an obedience class. Call that number and tell them Mike said that. So, all right. Thanks. Speaking of which, we'll get you a certificate for class. All right. We've got the. Uh, so High Desert Obedience Club. Next item. Uh, pet pals. So, uh, you know, there was an article on Spectrum. I think the AV Press ran a little thing recently, and uh, it was called the Books and Barks Program. So you got these kids that are get awful shy. They don't like the, you know, the nervous reading and stuff like this. But uh, these dogs, they don't, uh, they don't judge you when you're reading. And uh, these kids will read to them. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more and tell us who you are and a little bit about yourself. My name is Mike Metch. I'm president of the High Desert Obedience Club and a member of Pet Pals, which is a subdivision of uh, High Desert Obedience Club. The therapy dogs are dogs not like service dogs. Their job is to visit with people. And uh, you can tell. <laughs> yeah, I goofed and said visit. Harry, over here, heel. Uh, anyway, uh, Ari and I do uh, a couple of things. We do the uh, books and barks over here at the library just down the street. And we also do uh, visits to uh, retirement homes, the veterans' homes, twice a month. We have one Tuesday, Thursday, today, this week. Um, and we go and visit with people. And in general, their idea is that the therapy dogs will come in and they just try and make you feel better. Ari, over here. Wants to go visit. Visit with Mike. Come here. Harry, visit. Visit. Scratch him, he'll lean right into you. Don't let him knock you over. <laughs> um, therapy dogs can be any kind of a dog. Uh, we have represented over here. Um, AJ has a uh, Pembroke uh, Welsh Corgi, Corgi and um, Joy has Dachshunds that are also therapy dogs. So we have therapy dogs as big as uh, Newfoundland that's 165 pounds. That's almost twice him. Aries right about 105. Um, but we have another group that will visit the hospitals on a pretty regular basis. So we're all over the place. Yeah, I know that when uh, I think Aries was in one of the uh, early one of the hospitals, that would lighten her day up. And they'd come in these days and what this guy's doing is, is good. It's really important. And uh, with the kids, so uh, tell you what, uh, get the, the whatever numbers we give to you. We've got letters for all the folks. You guys gave us the names. Okay. We're going to let you distribute them.
Palmdale City Library to encourage kids to read aloud. The City of Palmdale would like to thank you for making a difference in our community. So, sir, thank you so much. Thank you. This is going to get boring, so you guys don't have to say that. Is that <laughs> well, no, 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 not you. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is this is I didn't follow dogs at the management. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Chuck, uh, I know there's a, a number of uh, of awards that our public works department and individuals have gotten. And uh, uh, you got a whole stack of them here. Maybe you can uh, help us run through this and tell me what they're about. Yeah, it's, it's okay if I have the. Yeah, bring them wherever you want. Uh, yeah. So at this point, I'd like to have, and maybe they can stand up here and check to see if the mic's on. Yeah. 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 Hello. There's a little froggy, so. Okay. So Lynn, Lynn Glidden, who is our Capital Project Division Manager, uh, Ben Lucha. Is Ben still here? Yeah. Okay, who's our Environmental Technology Division Manager, Arista Hennessy? Come on up, don't be shy. And uh, who's our Engineering te Technician, and, uh, and then Ulysses Gonzalez. You can join us up here. So, and I guess the Jason is, uh, wasn't able to make it. So we'll, if, if, uh, if I could, just uh, if you'll indulge me just one second, I just, I just wanna say that uh, the public works staff at this city, so proud to be a part of this and honored, uh, dedicated and, and really um, great staff and they are really uh, top of things and that's really evidenced by these awards that we got from American Public Works Association. And I'll start out with, uh, with, I guess maybe everybody doesn't know what American Public Works Association is, it's a national organization, there are hundreds of chapters all over the United States and then that's broken down into branches. We are in the High Desert Branch, part of the Southern California chapter. Uh, the Southern California chapter has a, an award ceremony every year, and it, this happened in, uh, I guess it was in December 13th, down in Lakewood. And there are projects that go, to the, go there, and, and we got an award for one of those. But I'll start out with the President's Award. The president of the chapter is and that's really San Bernardino County, Orange County. Uh, doesn't include Ventura County, but it's uh, LA County and even Kern County. And this is uh, uh, the president of that chapter has the ability to issue or, or to award somebody for distinguished participation in the chapter and in public works and in APWA over a longer period of time. It's sort of a, a career, I, I don't want to call it a, uh, long I guess, time. Yeah, it's a, it's a career long achievement that's given out by the president of the chapter. And this year, and I don't think we've had a, a our branch hasn't had this award uh, ever. So, and, that, and he awarded that to Lynn, Lynn Glidden, who is our capital projects. Lynn's name is on a lot of the buildings as you walk around uh, City Hall and in the complex. Um, I, you know, I don't know if you want to see those brass plaques out front. Yeah, I mean, yeah. she's been involved in a lot of them over. 28 and a half years, a lot. So she's put a lot of time and effort into making this city great. So I don't know if you want, Lynn, you want to? No, I don't want to say anything. You don't want to say anything? <laughs> she's very shy, too. She's, she's not shy, but she is very humble and as, as most. She has quite a surprise. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so and I guess the next thing is at the same, uh, at that same award ceremony for the Southern California chapter, uh, we were awarded a, a, uh, an award. Um, I think you're all aware that we purchased the city purchased the street lights, 18,000 street lights from Southern California Edison, and that was in an effort to sort of uh, take over ownership of those. Edison was making a lot of money on that, and as much as anything else, this will allow us to start down the road of being smart cities. And so now we own the street lights. And many cities are doing this, but the award that we won for this was uh, 
creative and innovative. And it was really on the process that we undertook, which most other cities didn't take. And that had to do with making sure that people were, uh, their health wasn't affected, believe it or not. And I think Ben could probably, or, or Arista, uh, could explain this a little bit better, but it, that's really, it wasn't the fact that we bought the streetlights, it was the process that we took in finding the best avenue to get to that point. So maybe Ben could say a few words. Yeah, and so like Chuck said, uh, a lot of cities are doing it, and um, I have, unfortunate for them, but for us, it, worked out that we learned from their mistakes and there were some cities that it didn't go very well for them and we learned from what they did and we tried our best to reach out to the public, involve the public as much as possible, do a pilot program so people can go out and see the streetlights and it was the engagement with the public, it was taking into consideration health, uh, health effects that the streetlights could potentially have, making sure we were dark skies compliant, it was just going above and beyond to make sure that this was the best project we can provide for the city. And so it wasn't really the project, it was a process where we won the award. I guess, you know, we don't do this in a vacuum. It's not just the public works show. And I'd like to, to make sure that, and there were other divisions, but I think the biggest one is purchasing and the finance division. Karen and your team, you guys did a great job in assisting the, this, uh, the process of taking these over. So. I want to give kudos to you guys as well. And then I guess the next one is the, uh, and we, so we go from the Southern California chapter to the High Desert Branch. So there was an award given out for uh, the best use of technology. And we're all standing right in the middle of that right now. <laughs> that the, uh, the award was for the city council chamber upgrade. You can see the, the, the screen, all of the, you know, the, the council members have the benefit of you know, some, uh, uh, you know, technology to, I think before it was quite a bit different. I even haven't seen the screen, but so it's, uh, it's really brought us into, into the, I guess the eighties kind of thing, but, uh, really, but, but it, uh, it was a lot of work and Ulysses Gonzalez, I mean, the two people down here on the end, these are our rising stars in public works are, are, I don't know if you, I don't like millennials, but I guess they are, and so we're, they're great, they're we're really, to learn what they sold us up here, yeah, so. that's right, so, uh, so great job, Ulysses, and I think, uh, you know, we had pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty seamless, for the most part, uh, implementation, so good job, and then last, uh, Jason Finch uh, was named at the branch level the, uh, the employee of the year, Jason is our, uh, He's, he's our manager in the street, uh, or I'm sorry, in the engineering division, but in the, um, in the uh, I guess, traffic division, traffic section of that. And we had a big vacancy that uh, someone left, and he really filled the spot um, and really went over and above. He represented, he was staffed to the NCTC and ABTA, helping out with uh, the board members at that level, which was really way above his, uh, I mean, he's, he was uh, punching above his weight class, but he did a great job, and so he was named the Employee of the Year. And this is the second year in a row that Palmdale staff has gotten Employee of the Year. So hopefully I haven't taken up too much you time, Mayor. Right. I apologize, but uh, well, it's important for we have a great staff. Know that what our team is doing there. Yeah. So, so well, thank you for your indulgence. We'll do the same thing. We can get you guys, and we'll get uh, John get some pictures here. <laughs> Thanks, Public Works uh, Division there, and uh, the uh, good work that you guys are doing. I know I can uh, I can read my newspaper out on any street out there right now. It was, uh, this is looking really good. Okay, now I need a uh, I need a motion to waive the full reading of the resolutions and ordinances, please. Second. Oh, you did. I need to. Did you get a motion? Okay. Is there a second? 
Uh, the second one by you. Right. Okay. So motion by Mr. Loa. Ms. Bentoncourt was a second. Okay. I have um, Loa Bentoncourt and Loa Clio. That's the moved and second. I, I did have always uh, second, but Ms. Bettencourt actually used the new system. She, she, okay. actually, she actually she used the system these guys put in. Yeah. So. Okay. All right, so that's what we've got. Huh? We do have do a, take a, look a motion and a second. Okay. Do you want to start voting? Uh, that would be great. Still working through a couple of these. Okay. Can, can I? What's happening here? Okay, while he's working through that, while he's going through that, we'll just go ahead and uh, do a voice voice vote. We have a motion, we have a second. All in favor on that item? Aye. Any opposed? So ordered. Okay, so uh, that was number six. Number seven. Okay, this is public comments on uh, item number eight, the consent calendar. Number nine, appointments. If you wish to comment on the items listed above, please come forward to the podium, state the item number and the comments. Uh, there's a maximum three-minute limit that's going to be imposed for each speaker, uh, other than staff members. And if you could fill out a speaker sheet, that would that would help. So this is for items eight and nine. Any speakers on these items? Okay, seeing none, we have the consent calendar. Um, any uh, council members have any uh, items they would like to uh, pull from the consent calendar for further discussion or questions? No, I don't have anything. Anybody? I'll okay, make a motion, I'll a motion to approve. Mine's still not coming up here, but Austin as the mover and seconded by Juan. Okay. So uh, okay. while we're trying to get my machine See, I'm learning here. Uh, Start voting. Send me back in. All right. All in favor and uh, on the approval of the consent calendar, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So ordered. Okay. We made that through that. All right. So we're on uh, item number nine, appointment. Um, this is a, a reappointment of uh, Helen Valador as a director public member to serve on the Palmdale Recycle Water Authority for one year renewable term to expire January of 2020. Um, anybody, uh, Ellen's been there, she's been doing a good job um, speaking with uh, some of the folks over there. Um, she's very engaged. Anybody, yeah. Mr. Bishop, you're the chairman. Could I, I chair that board. Um, she does a good job. She's. Uh, her attendance is good. She's very attentive. She goes to the seminars and she brings a, a lot of information. And uh, she, I feel like she's an asset. Okay. So uh, based on that, uh, I'll go ahead and make a. S no, you're. Can I make a second? Yeah. There's, there's no second. So I'm, I make a motion. And according second. to that, then Mr. Bishop is second again. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, I think we can vote then. See if my screen comes up this time. Richard Loa. I thought it pressed yes. Yeah. Sir. He's pushed it. All in favor of the item, say uh, indicate by saying aye. 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 Anybody aye. opposed? Motion carries. Okay, new business. Um, so we have. Um, this is the time of year when we uh, do the uh, standard uh, routine council reorganization. Um, is there anybody that uh, is not happy with the position they're on right now and wants off? Anybody that wants on something? Now's the time that we're going to do that. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. City Manager, do we want to just go down the uh, list here? Or? We'll keep track as you move down the list. And, uh, do we have any motion to vote on every position? Or just no. Well, I think we'll get to the very end and just uh, uh, validate the, the whole group then. Right. So. Um, does anybody have a burning interest of getting on or off the air quality management district? I'm currently on that board. 
Uh, I'm okay with that. That's uh, not that much time. I know Mr. Bishop is over there. Does anybody else uh, desperately want on the Air Quality Management District? Um, I'm okay with staying on. How about an uh, alternate, Mr. Carvillo? I, I'm happy to stay as an alternate. Okay. So we'll keep it as is. We want to keep AQMD as is then? I would say so. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay. okay. Everybody, everybody concur? Okay. Uh, so we'll look at the um, um, Mosquito Abatement District. Uh, I spoke with Mr. Persons recently. He's, he's happy there. Does anybody want to uh, deal with uh, mosquitoes and vector control? This one has the uh, in the provision to um, maintain a, um, a, um, a citizen on that board. Uh, anybody have any other ideas? If not, no, we'll fine. move on. I'm okay with that. Okay. I'm okay. ABTA. Uh, currently, uh, I am on there along with uh, Mr. Carrillo. And uh, I want to thank you, by the way, for stepping up. And that, I know that's a long distance for you to drive in for that meeting, and it's not that long of a meeting, but thank oh. you very much. Your input's been very appreciated there. I have really enjoyed being there. I've learned a lot. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's taking a little uh, toll on me having to come on uh, Tuesdays for that uh, meeting. Um, I know that we have now a citizen alternate, um, but if uh, Mr. Lowe is interested in participating, uh, or, or Ms. Betancourt on ABTA, yeah, uh, as long as we have the coverage needed to, to represent our city. I'd like to be uh, a delegate on there. You want to do that one? Okay, so you want to do that? Okay. Okay. So, um, again, that's, uh, that, that's, that's, that's one that I actually kind of enjoy. Anybody else, uh, anybody want to bump me on that, or are we all good for that otherwise? I'm good with you staying there representing us. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, we'll move on then. So, uh, let's, uh, the, the change on that will be a uh, second delegate will be, uh, Mr. Lowe, I'm not sure how long it's take the county to get through all their rigmarole to get that citizen alternate. Uh, contract cities right now, uh, that's probably a quarterly meeting. Um, uh, Ms. Betancourt is the alternate on there. I think anyone can also be an alternate. Anybody else want to be a designated person on that? Or how do you want to, any change anybody wants to uh, do on, on contract cities? Is Ms. Betancourt... Uh going forward with that appointment or? Yes. Okay. So you want to stay as an uh, alternate on that? Yes. Okay. All right. Anybody uh, Anybody else have any other ideas on that? No. Right. So we'll move on to the audit committee right now. That's uh, audit committee currently is myself and uh, Ms. Betancourt on that one. Um, and uh, with the alternate as uh, Mr. Carrillo. Uh, anybody um, have any other ideas on how we want to organize that one there? I noticed I had uh, Mr. Bishop has thrown his, uh, threw his name in the hat. I can be an alternate or a, a delegate, whichever, or at least an alternate if it's uh, difficult for Mr. Carrillo to make those meetings. Um, Usually these are towards the end of the day. Oh, okay. So, uh, but uh, you guys tell me what you want to do here, you know. it's uh, We meet usually... Um, Jim, the, twice but, year. about twice a year on that, usually okay. when we have the cappers come up, you know. If you guys are happy where you're at, I'm, that's fine. If, if either one of you felt like you wanted to get off, I would be happy to take that place. I'm fine with it. I'm fine too. Okay. All right. Um, I'll tell you what. I'll let you have that one as a, as a delegate on that, okay? Okay. So it's, it's not a lot of time, but it's just it's, it's like one more thing, right? So the investment board, so we have a, a, a city ordinance that has me on that. Um, currently, uh, Mr. Carrillo is on that. Uh, somebody uh, is, uh, needs to rotate onto the uh, investment committee. Um, anybody want to take a stab at the investment committee? That meets what, uh, once or twice a year, sir? Yes, twice a year. Twice a year for the investment committee, reviewing the investment uh, um, material and stuff like that. Does Councilmember Carrillo the mayor? I cannot be there uh, for the uh, uh, bylaws, I guess, or the okay. resolution. Okay. Yeah. I can step up. To you can step up, okay. okay. So we'll show uh, Mr. Law as the uh, second member on that, Becky. Okay. okay. Um, so we have the High Desert Corridor. Um, right now, um, I'm the director on that, and uh, Mr. Bishop is the alternate. Uh, we just got those affirmed by the county. I don't know, do we want to start messing with that and jumping through the hoops again with the county all over again? I, I'm good with that. Yeah, this is a committee that's probably going to get pretty busy over the next year or two. So, with still two meetings per year. Well, this that's been meeting a lot more. 
with, okay. with Brightline and so forth, I think we're going to see a lot more happening. Okay. Are they only going to have one alternate set still? So. Or can, that? can you have more than one alternate set? Well, we, we also have the provision with what we'd have to do. If you want to have another alternate on there, we can submit it to the county. The county has to jump through their process to do that. But any one of these, it takes a couple of months before we can get on the agenda with the county. So this is something we put into the county about four months ago. So all right, we'll leave that as, as is then. Um, League of Cities. Um, I'm currently there. I am. Um, I probably ought to stay as the delegate on that only because I just got um, the uh, state league director's position, and I'm on the uh, legislative committee and stuff over there. Um, and uh, Mr. Bishop is an alternate. Uh, does anybody else want? Uh, this is another one where we can have more than one alternate. You want to stay on as an alternate? Um, I'm okay. If there's somebody else that wants to take that spot, I'm okay with that as well. Richard, I saw so you waving your yeah. hand there. Yeah. Okay. So, so right. do you want to you want to jump in on that one then? Sure. All right. Do you want to give that spot up, or do you want to stay two delegates on that? Or how you want to do that? Um, the two delegate two delegates is good because if he can't second, make it, uh, anything uh, a, a second alternate. Yeah, second. A second alternate, yeah. Mr. Uh, Ricky. Yeah, I think that'll work, and especially the meetings for Desert Mountain Division are on Fridays, and they range from as far as Mammoth Lakes to Twenty Nine Palms to Barstow, <laughs> and so carpool, um, carpool. Yeah, so sometimes it's out of the reach of, of some of us. Okay, okay. so uh, two alternates Becky, did you get that then? So, so alternate and lower. So yeah, the, the, yeah, our ordinance allows anybody to be an alternate, but both of them want to be listed. So. I guess Mr. Bishop is alternate one, and then Mr. Loa is alternate two. Yes. Did you do that? That's fine. Is that good? Okay. And, and now those meetings are open to everybody, by the way. So feel free. We're going to have it in February. It's going to be the one up here. So I would encourage everyone to uh, to oh. attend. I was on suggest carpool, but it's here, huh? Yeah, we can. Yeah, plenty of carpool here. So, um, so next one is uh, LA County Sanitation. This is one of those, again, where by code... Um, it's me on at, uh, on both of those, and I need I need a second delegate for the Palmdale uh, Sanitation District. Um, did let me see who who we, who wanted to be on the Sanitation District? I think I put it. I think I was interested in it. So I think I, th I think you're listed as alternate. What we need to do okay. is we need to make sure that we keep an alternate for both of those. And we need two delegates on the, on the. Sanitation District for Palmdale, and we need an alternate for both of them. So we need to fill the vacancy first for the Palmdale one, but we have to keep in mind that we have to have an alternate for both of those positions. So, so did I mark that? I thought I did. Okay. Oh yeah. Do you want to stay as alternate on both of those, Mr. Bishop? That's fine. Okay, you want to be the alternate, and yeah. then Mr. Loa that was indicating, I think that he wanted to be the second person for the Palmdale Sanitation. Then. Okay. Is that anybody else have any other ideas on that? No. Okay. All right. So Becky, that was that clear? Thank you. All right. NCTC. Um, so what I would like to do here is um, uh, I would like to ask. Uh, uh, it's kind of an awkward spot, but at the time we were juggling and we just put this together and we put. Um, our community representative at large, we appointed uh, Mr. Perti, uh, but on NCTC, uh, we need to have um, we need to have um, uh, another member on that to replace. Um, I, I think it would be just a more comfortable situation if Mr. Perti would find himself having to vote against us. I'd be happy to have the shortest term on the NCTC ever. <laughs> One meeting. So right now it's uh, myself um, with the uh, alternate is Mr. Carrillo. What does it mean? Uh, that meets uh, as, as necessary, probably about quarterly right now, every couple of months. Yeah, it's typically on Mondays, and they do poll to see uh, how many are available for those Mondays uh, with yeah, the county the offices day, and so forth. It's a huge yeah, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock on Mondays. And that's coming up on the 15th next Monday? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So right now we've got uh, myself, Carrillo, and Bishop. Um, but I'm the alternate. You, yes, correct. Um, yes, sir, you're the alternate. So can there be three council members? They, uh, yes, because it's another agency, so you absolutely can. Yeah, we went through, we jumped through all these hoops before on getting okay. the designations on there. You so showed some interest that you. Well, I just it, it's during the day. Yes, ten o'clock on Mondays. And where's that? 
It's whatever, wherever. It could be. It rotated Santa around. Or sometimes or it's up here. Sometimes Lincoln it's Santa 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 that, that won't work. I'm sorry. Mr. Loa, I think that uh, defaults to you. I'll take it. All right. There you go. By default, Mr. Loa. So. All right. All right. Um, now we have we have uh, a vacancy or two over at uh, TPAA, uh, but um, I I'd, I'd like to get some recommendations. Perhaps have uh, see if the uh, uh, the board over there they've got a number of people that participate on a regular basis, uh, and they've indicated uh, that they have some interest in um, maybe um, suggesting somebody for this spot. Um, and uh, also with uh, with some of the uh, uh, the potential issues that come up with uh, council members and the, and the um, incompatible office um, seat with the like a school board seat would be. Um, I'd like to I'd like to see like to have uh, the uh, the board over there um, toss us over a couple names. A couple of them already approached me and they really like that idea. A couple of the folks on the uh, on the school board have independently approached me on this one. So if you guys are okay with that, it's been it's been vacant for a short time now. I think if we brought this back next month and if we could ask the uh, TPAA board to give us something. Anybody else have any other ideas on that one? Well, There's only one They'll bring it back to us and we'd look at their list and mm -hmm. we could we could add or subtract from that and make that appointment. So. Yeah, there's there's only one vacancy at this time. There'll be another one um, in July by Mr. Peterson. He would have served his second consecutive term. Um, maybe doing an application process, just like uh, we did um, for the last two appointments. I think that that's the way that we should address that for consistency purposes. Right. Otherwise, we would be having three different ways to appoint right. uh, members to the TPAA. Can we, can we have? Uh, could we have the, them? Um, um, Give us the recommendation and then have those people uh, that are interested then provide those applications to us. Well, can it be open to the public? Well, I think I think it could be, but I think that I think that that board's got to work with those people. I think they're going to kind of have an idea about who's out there and might be interested. So I'm just, I'm just trying to make sure that we're we're okay. tapping people that have that have that interest in. Uh, as you recall, there's no shortage of people that were interested. At the last time we held applications, yeah. there was more than qualified people to choose from. It was right. quite a difficult decision from what I remember. We can we can do an application process and maybe get some feedback from them before we bring it to the council. Okay. Yeah. Does, we'll that, does, that, does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Is that good? All right, we'll go ahead. So we'll hold off on that one and uh, and then uh, uh, Becky then whatever you need to do. So um so I'm clear do you want to go ahead and open the recruitment and with giving suggestions as well, Tom? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think that, yeah. Okay, Recycle Water Authority. The chairman right now is Mr. Bishop, and the second uh, member over there is um, Mr. Carrillo, and uh, I am an alternate on that. So we have two people on the water board, Recycle Water Board, two directors? Yes, two, yeah, two directors on the alternate. Yeah. Okay. And they both go to all the meetings? I think we, we just... We don't appoint to that. They appoint They appoint their people, we appoint our people. Okay, yeah, I just, I just didn't realize we had two directors. So. Yeah. Okay. So, um... I like to stay on that board. It's really um, something that I really like to keep on doing. I know he's got some important stuff coming. Mr. Bishop, yeah. what's your... What's your uh, same, I'd uh, like to stay on that and continue pushing forward with what we're working on. Okay. You Anybody okay want that? the alternate seat on that? I'll take the alternate. I used to be on it before, so... Okay. I was on it before, so yeah, I'll take that one. As the alternate. And that generally meets in the evening, so that right. won't conflict with your stuff. Uh, Becky, you got that one? Okay. All right, SCAG, uh, there's, no, um, there's no alternate position for that. That is a position that the uh, NCTC, based on the input from the councils, makes that appointment. Uh, there, we currently have three spots over there. Um, and we're um, we're trying to flush all those out right now. Uh, Mr. Carrillo mm -hmm. is appointed to a CEHD, Community mm -hmm. Economic and Human Development. Basically, um, that tends to be more housing than anything else. Uh, Mr. Bishop is on um, transportation right now, and uh, 
there seems to be some confusion because uh, at NCTC, we went and appointed somebody from the outside of our district on that. So we're trying to get that clarified. Um, so we're working, we're working on that. Uh, I think uh, technically there has to be someone from District 43 from our district because that's our seat there. So um, I think we'll be able to solve that other issue with the member from the other district. I think we found a solution for that. Uh, would um, someone else be interested in serving on, uh, there's a number of committees there, transportation, um, community economic development, environmental, and several of the other ones. If you'd be interested in serving on, on SCAG, that meets uh, once a month on Thursdays. Um, and uh, uh, the committees generally meet from about 10 to 12 downtown. Uh, sometimes we'll carpool down to that. But uh, is anybody else interested? And we can flesh out the exact committees on that as it goes. You don't have to decide that right here, um, but uh, we need to submit those to SCAG and through NCTC. So, so it's not a delegate nor an alternate, it's uh, being on a committee. These are committees, that, subcommittees. Yeah. 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 Would you want to be considered for one of them? Yeah, I'd like to be okay. considered. Yeah. You, we can sit down, we can kind of go over those, and with maybe with BHEN, he understands the committees, and, uh, and with the city manager, and get you dialed in on that. Okay. All right, uh, almost there. Um, U.S. Mexico Sister Cities Association. Um, so this is one that's open to everybody. Uh, I would I would really encourage everybody to stop in from time to time. Uh, the, uh, so that's a great group. Uh, anybody want their name off this list? No. No. All right. All right. So anybody else want to have their name officially on this? Because you can put as many delegates on this as you like. So. Oh. Really? Yeah. I'll be a delegate on it. Do you all want to be listed on that? I know sometimes you were attending. When, when do you? It's evenings. I think it's like uh, every other Tuesday or something like that. Second and fourth Wednesdays. Wednesdays, yeah. Oh, so, did you want that one? I'm going to wait and see what Mike says on Tuesday. Okay. I usually teach Wednesday or Thursday. Well, it's open to everybody. You don't have to necessarily be appointed okay. by us. You can go in there and you can pay the... Oh, you're saying as a member. We have two no. delegates. Anybody else would be an alternate. Okay, all right. Right. but you can Person. be a, you can be a member of the group just by going in there and that was forty five bucks a year or something like that. It's five dollars a meeting. Something like that. Yeah, it's it's cheap. That's it's a group of the group. All right, uh, state prison advisory board. Uh, Ms. Bettencourt is on that. That meets on a uh, on an afternoon, mm -hmm. uh, quarterly or something like that, every other month. Uh, we need an alternate on the prison board. So uh, I'm looking here. I think Mr. Yes. Loa has. Uh, Initials on that one? I did. What does it entail, Ms. Bettencourt? Excuse me? What, is it, what does it involve? Don't wear it? jeans. We don't, don't wear, wear jeans, jeans and don't wear blue shirts, right? You can ask us about that. <laughs> right. um, we meet and uh, we meet with the warden and the staff there and go over programs, progresses, um, what they have there, and problems. And okay. And when, when does it meet? Uh, the third Wednesday of the month. Every month. Like at 3 o'clock or something like that? Yeah. About 3 p.m. Yeah, the day. I'll, I'll be happy to work is with that you that? on that. Is the alternate on that? And the alternates, are, by the way, alternates are always encouraged to participate and attend because that way you stay up to speed on any of these committees. Just let them know you're coming. Yeah. Yeah. Get you on the list. And don't wear jeans of any kind. No yeah. denim. Just can't walk in there. All right. Any questions on those, uh, Madam City Clerk? Um, no, I, I think we got them all. Okay. okay. All right. Comments, speech. Uh, any uh, any public comments on those on those uh, committee appointments? Okay, and now moving on to 10.2. So this is discussion and action regarding Mayor Pro Tem appointment. Um, so, uh, you know, I just want to say that I really enjoyed being the Mayor Pro Tem uh, this year. Uh, thank you uh, for letting me be, nominating me, the Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, it's been a great uh, experience. Uh, I recommend that. And I mean, that's their ordinance to allow everybody to have a turn. That's what the... Uh, no, that's not the ordinance. That's the ordinance to change. Yeah. All right. But, okay. But nevertheless, nevertheless, I do appreciate the fact that I know you didn't get a lot of uh, particular action in there uh, just because of the dynamics, but uh, that's one of the things I'm looking to do is to, uh, is to uh, uh, with all the stuff that's going on, all the boards and committees that I'm on, um, I know that it, uh, I'm going to be relying on that position uh, quite a bit more and uh, I really believe it's more than just coming in and handling this uh, this meeting uh, uh, with um, 
I happen to be off sick, late, on vacation, or boycott the meeting. So, uh, so um, anybody, uh, anybody have any thoughts on this particular issue? Um, I think it's. I think we have to have somebody that's uh, that's um, going to be uh, be able to uh, step up and kind of. I know it's, it's difficult sometimes with with your distance and stuff like that. And I know Ms. Betancourt has uh, work commitments. We all have work commitments. Well, I'd be so willing to step up and fill that role. So, okay. Any, anybody else have any other uh, thoughts on that? I'll take that as a motion. Uh, I'll make that as a motion then, and uh, I'll look for a second. I'll second, but it's not working. All right, well. Did you get a second, Becky? Is it, um, it's pushing a button, but it's not, it's not responding. I see, yeah, the secondary isn't coming up. We're going to start that again, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, while he's doing that, signing it back in. Um, any additional uh, public comments on 10.2? I'd just like to say that I still think that we need to go back to the rotation instead of having the... It'd be a group selection. Yeah. I think that's fair. And I, I think the, the ordinance that you had was, was fair for everyone on the council. And so I think that it should be returned to the original that's ordinance. No, I, actually, that wasn't the original ordinance. The original ordinance was no. what we were, we were managing it now. So. Is that thing going to work or not work? Right. I'm going to go ahead and do it on this end. Uh, on the previous ordinance then. So we have um, Steve Hoffbauer as the mover and second by Richard Loa to appoint um, Bishop as the council member Bishop as the mayor pro tem. All right. So go ahead right. and start voting. So we, she's got that on there now? Oh, there, there's the voting things come up. Okay, so go ahead and show your votes then. So we need a vote by Richard Loa. Can everybody push a button there? Mm -hmm. This isn't working. All in favor of the uh, motion, say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Opposed. Okay, any abstentions? Motion carries 4 to 1. Okay, public hearing. This is uh, item 11.1. Um, staff to read the ordinance, uh, number 1515. Mr. Heffernan. Yes, sir. Okay, Mayor. Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of the Palmdale City Council. Tonight, uh, the item before you tonight is approval of ordinance number 1515. I'll read the ordinance, ordinance number 1515, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palmdale to amend Municipal Code Section 8.04.100 by adding and adopting County of Los Angeles Ordinance 2018-0037, which implements revisions to state law governing on-site wastewater treatment systems. Okay, so uh, we need a voice vote to introduce ordinance number 1515. Do I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, so I'll push the button here. Uh, well, it's a voice vote. Is this always. just a voice vote on this one? Yeah. Okay, so Mr. Carrillo, we have a second by <coughs> Mr. Lowe, I believe. Thank you. Mr. Bishop, yeah. to uh, okay. introduce the ordinance. Uh, all in favor on this item, you don't need to push the button. This is a voice vote only. Say aye. 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 Anybody opposed or ordered? Um, Okay, we'll open a public hearing on this item. Uh, basically, uh, you want to uh, uh, just give us the uh, Reader's Digest version of what this will do. Sure, sure, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the State Water Resources Control Board has the authority over on-site wastewater treatment systems, which are septic systems installed on separate parcels. Uh, it, those parcels that are unable to connect to a municipal water uh, sewer system, wastewater system, uh, the on-site wastewater treatment capture and treat wastewater to reduce the effect on the environment. Uh, the State Water Resources Control Board uh, promulgated an on-site uh, wastewater treatment system policy that provides minimum site uh, design standards. And uh, they allowed the um, individual agencies to come up with their own policies that would meet the standards of the state. but might be a little more adaptable to the individual agencies. This was done by the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health, and they adopted ordinance that would implement a local agency management plan that was then approved by the state. 
that local agency management plan had uh, uh, requirements that were more adaptable to the situation in Los Angeles County. Um, those requirements, as I said, were approved by the state. Uh, ordinance number 1515 will revise the Palmdale Municipal Code uh, and it will incorporate County Ordinance 2018-37 and that action will keep the City of Palmdale in compliance with state law as it relates to on-site wastewater treatment systems. The MOU, which you approved earlier, will give the City Manager authority to sign the, the uh, uh, Memorandum of Understanding, which actually allows the county on our behalf to, per well, we do the permitting, but they do the approval process. An applicant would take that directly to the county, the process for approval, come back to us for the permit. And then they would assist us with the actual implementation and management of that um, of those systems. So staff recommends the city council approve ordinance 1515 of the city of Palmdale to amend the code, municipal code 804-100 by adding and adopting County of Los Angeles ordinance number 2018-0037. And I'm here for any question you might have. Anybody that uh, any? Uh... I think that you stated that the MOU, as it was approved, will remain as is once it goes through the uh, LA County process. Um, the MOU was presented and approved earlier tonight, uh, will remain as it was presented. Uh, are there any chances that that MOU may change after it goes through the LA County process? No, the, count, the, the MOU as it's presented in the staff report, that is, the, that is the MOU that was presented to us and, and other cities uh, okay. Similar cities, Lancaster, LA County. LA County, by LA County. Perfect. So that's been negotiated. There were some things that we wanted to change, you know, the, if that app, if it was applicable. Um, and so we've made several minor changes. All those changes are incorporated in the one that's in the staff report. So there won't be any any real changes. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else have anything on this? Okay. So uh, we'll need a uh, we'll need a uh, actual motion. Well, we need to open the. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, public hearing. Open a public hearing and we'll receive any testimony relative to this item. Any member of the public wishing to speak, now be the time. There you go. Nobody wants to talk about sewers, huh? <laughs> Imagine that. I know you feel bad about that, Chuck, but it's a dirty job. It's Somebody a dirty job. Yes, it is. All right, so we'll, um, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, and any, any opposition to close the public hearing? So we're... Uh, staff recommendations to adopt ordinance number 1515. Uh, I need a motion on the item then. Move to approve. We are having trouble with the voting system. Right. So I could go ahead and um, call, since this is a ordinance, um, we could do a, a voice vote. Okay. All right. So um, uh, do we need, we need a motion? Yes. Move to approve. And a second? Second. Okay. You have that? Mr. Lola and Mr. Creel? Yes. Okay. And... Um, all in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody Aye. opposed? Okay. Motion carries. You got that? Yes. Great. All right. We're going to go to 11.2. Um, this is from uh, City Attorney uh, Ditsazi. You want to, uh, you're on, sir. Yes. Uh, no, oh, there you are. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Uh, I'd like to respectfully request that this item be continued to a future council meeting. Um, after this item was posted on the agenda, I got some good feedback from staff on ways to improve the ordinance. Um, and there's a little tinkering I'd like to do with regard to uh, taxi metering. So, Okay. Was there anybody here on the taxi metering or the taxi ordinance at all that wanted to speak on this issue? All right. Seeing none, uh, we just uh, continue this item to a date uncertain to be reposted. That would be great. Thank you. Okay. Any opposition? Nope. Nope. Everybody? Okay. Okay. So we're then. All right. So we're going to go down to uh, item 12, non-agenda items, public comments. Uh, this portion of the agenda is for uh, any individual to uh, the opportunity to address the council on any item regarding city business that's not on the agenda. Uh, under state legislation, no action can be taken uh, on the items uh, not specifically referenced on the agenda. Uh, please note the three-minute time limit may be imposed on each speaker other than staff members. Um, anybody want to, uh, it probably took longer to say that. Than... Any 
and here comes the public. So, if you didn't fill out a sheet, if you could just do that later so that she makes sure she keeps the record here, just state your name. Right? My name is Marsha Furman, and I live on Carroll side. Okay. Mine is just a clarification question. Um, I have the agenda for today, and at the end of the uh, bit, um, after all the, the meetings and stuff, it's number 15, says that we're going to adjourn to February 19th. To fix that. Uh, okay. That's incorrect. It was a typo. Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, Madam City Clerk, the uh, correct date on that should be? That should be February 5th. That will be okay. February 5th. Okay. I and apologize I'll, for that. We just didn't get time Okay. To... That's, uh, I, I appreciate that. Also, I wanted to say that um, in, um, on January 18th, I attended, I guess, what is called the second council meeting um, of the month that we, uh, that y'all had. Uh, I'm, December. Uh, in, oh, you're yeah, absolutely December. correct. Thank you for the correction. Um, this is something that I think I probably have heard in the meetings that these were happening, but I didn't really know they were happening. So um, I did look back on the uh, archives of the meetings, and it seems like uh, there weren't that many that actually came to, um, uh, that actually took place. They were on a schedule, but they didn't happen. And the few that I saw uh, maybe were kind of, um, I guess I would call it non-citizen issues, you know, some kind of report or whatever. But the particular one I went to on December 18th dealt with uh, illegal dumping and uh, safe and sane fireworks and illegal fireworks. Now, these are issues that are important to our citizens and come up quite frequently uh, throughout the year. Um, something like that, I think, is uh, real important to discuss in the light of um, uh, of day, so to speak, maybe in a regular council meeting or one that is very well publicized that it's going to take part. It just really is a hot issue um, for a lot of people. Uh, and I, what, I was fortunate enough to find out about it and come, and there were a few people here. But uh, looking back on the archives of other possible meetings, uh, the low, uh, um, I don't want to say, them not coming about as often as they are on the schedule, and all of a sudden this, uh, these very important issues um, coming to light in that second council meeting. Maybe next time, maybe I would like to see a little more out there in the, for yeah. the public to know what's going on. That's great. I mean, okay. if, you, if you can think of something else we can be doing, because I know the city clerk posts it, John puts it out on the Twitter feed, he puts it on yeah. the Facebook page, yeah. uh, they put it on the city website. Uh, these are regular. Well, I and, ju and just yeah. so you know, yeah. we've been having those second meetings in a month for two years now. Well, no, absolutely. No, I know I have heard of I've We, heard, we yeah. make a point of scheduling them yeah. so that we can focus on one or two topics, but that's going to take up a lot of time without the ceremonial stuff and other, other business to get in the way yeah. so we can dive right into it. So, um, if, but if you've got some other ideas, John's the guy really to talk to on absolutely. that to kind of figure out what else can we do to make sure the public knows about this, because we kind of yeah. didn't talk about this was coming Absolutely. up. Absolutely. I found out on Facebook, which was, you know, it was just yeah. something that was shared, and I just clicked on it, and boom, there it was. And I did notice that this meeting was on Facebook. Um, I don't know if it was the city that posted it. You know, it was the emblem, and, and then it took me right to, you know, the city council agenda, which that's the first time I'd ever seen that. So that was because I'm always going, you know, through the uh, front curve. door and everything yeah. to, to get yeah. to find out what the agenda is. So that was real convenient, and that was on Facebook. That's all I did is Facebook. Right. So, um, so that was a new addition. That I thought, uh, wow, that's pretty cool. It just took me right to it. So that was good. Uh, John, you know, John's trying to up that a little bit. Do you have right. any other ideas on that? But uh, maybe something, you know, of course, we don't always have a really good attendance, council meetings. But, you know, just a reminder, even at the bottom, the next meeting, regularly, monthly one is this date, and... The secondary one, you know, I know maybe you don't always meet, but at least put it that your the possibility is there. Be sure to check our website to see if something's happening or something. Actually, when we adjourn the meeting, we always adjourn to the next time we're going to meet. So I know. if that's going to be the special meeting, we do that, and we'll generally tell, say, we're going to adjourn to, like when we adjourned to the December one, it was, um, 
we're going to adjourn to that, and these are going to be the topics yeah. for that. Because that's a workshop meeting. And again, the whole purpose yeah. of that is that it's a... But, it's, but I agree with Marcia. Yeah. A lot of people don't wait until the very adjournment to find out when the... Right, and, and it, you know, it just kind of, it's not a regular out-in-your-face kind of meeting. So it's some, it just goes, I mean, I'm pretty interested, you know, and just going right over my head, right. you know, not that, anyway. Um, but, uh, and also, just, I know this only happens twice a year. So now this this um, meeting has started. This council meeting was now the second the second uh, Tuesday. So now is the second Monday going to be the fourth, or is it going to be the third? It's good because of uh, holidays, and that's, that's well. Published. No, I know yeah, why yeah, it is. Yeah. But does that adjust so the, the workshops? Uh, yeah, if you indulge me for a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you uh, go. The workshops are the third Tuesday of the month. Okay, so and that's what they've uh, been. So it's been first and third Tuesdays for a couple years. years. Um, just real quick. The next workshop on uh, the January workshop, we actually covered that at a council meeting on the energy issues. So that one's going to be canceled unless I find something new to put in there. Okay. The February workshop will be on the budget. The March that's February nineteenth. March nineteenth is the arts master plan. April sixteenth is the first meeting in regard to the general plan update. A workshop on that. Uh, May twenty first will be another workshop on the budget. Uh, if we need it, and June 18th will be a workshop on the airport master plan, mm -hmm. and then we're going to be dark in July, and then August 20th, uh, our transit-oriented development master plan, and so that's what we've got planned out. Yeah, see, that's that's great. You know, maybe uh, that's something that that John could you know a, a tentative like schedule, just put tentative. You know, be sure to check back. You know that something hasn't happened, but at least it it you know brings us. Uh, to the, you know, focus, I mean, so we can see the words written, you know, just, you know, just do it at the beginning of the year. Um, these are and what's scheduled, because those are, some of those subjects are pretty... Um, that's why we dedicate a couple yeah, hours to them right, instead of a business right. meeting. And I'm not saying a lot comments. of people will show up, but they should have the uh, opportunity Marcia's to show up. Marcia made a good point, and I learned yeah. about a couple of them now myself, so we get it. Okay. We're going to fix it. Thanks. All right, thanks. Thanks very much. Anybody else? Make sure you give your name, and if you can fill out the speaker slip so she's got it for the record, then they're in the back of the room, okay? Okay. Um, hi, my name is Caitlin Baldwin, and I'm a political science student at Antelope Valley College. One of my assignments was to come to this meeting and ask some questions, so um, one of my questions was... So, let me help you with that, okay? It gets awkward to get into these types of uh, the, the dialogue. We probably pushed it to the limit that the city attorney was going to let us with this last one, okay? So, I'll tell you what you can do, okay? When is your assignment due? Um, it's due at the end of the month. At the end of the month, okay? So, between now and the end of the month, and uh, I, my schedule is crazy, but it's open. So, I would like you to uh, talk to the city clerk over here, and she'll give you my card, and you can call over to City Hall, and we can sit down, and you can talk to each one of us, and we can... Um, we can have a dialogue back and forth. Um, is there a particular topic that you want to hit on? Oh, no, it was just a general question of like... Who's your instructor? Uh, um, Amica? Yeah, Amica. Yeah, yeah. She has to be reminded that this is a public comment, not a public question. You're allowed to say <laughs> yeah. something, but you can't ask something. So, okay. But you know what? Um, uh, if you... We re I know, I know it's nerve-wracking, and this is probably the first time you've gotten up here, and you're going, oh, my God, he's yelling at me. So we're not yelling at you. We appreciate what you're doing, and, uh, and I was a merit badge counselor, so I get it. But here's what we can do. You can sit down, and you can call City Hall, and any one of us, and, and I will gladly, I'll meet you, you know, if, if that's what's going to work. And uh, we'll sit down, and we can have a dialogue on this stuff and probably spend a lot more time on it than that little timer over there is going to give you is that fair? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, um, can somebody make sure she's got her number over there? I've got her name. Okay. And number here. Okay. So, so we will set that up, okay? okay. And then, uh, and then, if you, especially if you email the questions, we can try to get some answers for you ahead of time too. How's that sound? Is that good? Thanks very much. And she's a she's a good lady. I enjoy uh, I enjoy her students coming to class to uh, from her class coming here. Hi. My name is Elva Arias, and I too am a student at ABC. 
And now that I know that I'm not supposed to ask a question, I just want to say... Well, you uh, can ask them, but we just really can't get into it. A... Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to say, uh, well, I've never been to a council meeting, and um, it was pretty much hard to understand what's going on, because I'm, I'm new at, at Palmdale. I came from L.A., um, no, but don't, I actually... Don't, don't gauge it on that, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, uh, with this class and um, with this first attendance, I actually look forward to, you know, attending another meeting and see, you know, get a better perspective of what Palmdale is, you know, of what this city is like, because I've only been here a month. Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> it's, it's different here than it is in other areas. Yes, it is. And uh, that's, that's why we're sticking around. So. Yeah. But if you, if, did you give your... I have her. Yeah. Yeah. So she'll, we'll get in touch, okay. and we'll make a point, okay? All right. Thank you very much. Right. I if appreciate you, If you shoot it. off an email, too, okay. we can try to make sure we've got the answers instead of just... Pulling out of our ears. Okay, okay, that's cool. Thank Great. you. Appreciate and if you, it. Thanks you, very much. Welcome to Palmdale. Thanks. Thank yeah. <laughs> if you really want to get involved, we have a partners academy you can sign up for. It teaches. Yeah. yeah. It teaches you all about the city. Mike. And Mike in the back will Mike, tell you all about it. Mike right, knows Mike? all about that, right? <laughs> yep. I have your I have your I'll send you an email. Anybody else wanna? Anybody else wanna give it a shot? I think we pretty much uh, maxed it out. All right. Um, so one of the things I asked the city clerk to do and the city manager was to, to list these different boards because it seems like sometimes we skip them and there was a meeting and then we forget about it and afterwards then you're stuck with having to submit a, a report to the city clerk but then nobody heard about it. So why don't we just go ahead and uh, go down the list here. These are the different boards and commissions that we're on. If they didn't meet, just say we didn't meet. If you didn't go, should I didn't we, go. Should we be adding the cannabis board to that? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, we'll add that. There's a uh, ad hoc committee at the end. That's a great idea. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, Mr. Bishop, I think you were at that last meeting. I've got a couple of notes, but why, would you like to uh, speak on the uh, AQMD? Uh, yeah. ABA QMD. Um, we awarded more uh, more money to local businesses to get rid of their old diesel projects, uh, cars and, and stuff like that. We're cleaning up there. Uh, we also talked about um, having a, uh, a local air quality expo. And uh, I don't think, do we award a lot that last yeah, meeting? So, so I'll bail you out on that. Okay. Um, so hang on, to your, hang on to your seats here, ladies and gentlemen. We awarded $829,700 in grants to local businesses for vehicles and equipment. Uh, uh, for example, uh, the AB Schools Transportation uh, Authority, um, to, a, uh, to a landscaping company, to uh, High Desert Dairy, um, to Paraclete High School. If you've got old, dirty equipment, let's get it replaced. There's money out there. AQMD's responsibility is to help clean up the air and enforce it, but we also funnel those monies through. And uh, anything else you want to add, Mr. Bishop? Uh, no, I know we have a lot more pro uh, projects that uh, other applicants have ex uh, expressed interest, uh, interest for. And one of the big ones that we had uh, success this year with and that we're trying to get more info on is the rebate program. We had a, a lot of people come in that bought electric cars or hybrid cars and that were getting a uh, rebate back, not only from the state and the, and the federal government, but from our local air quality board as well, up to 1000 or $1,500 for a purchase of one of those vehicles within the Antelope Valley. Um, and that includes a Tesla. You still are eligible for that rebate, even though we don't have a Tesla dealer here. We did work through that. But uh, our next meeting, we're going to get the numbers back of how many rebates we were able to give out to those cars purchased and have a, have a solid number of how many uh, people are moving over to a, a car that uses less gas and, and leaves our air a little cleaner. Correct. So um, lawnmowers, we're going we're gonna to even work harder. We're looking at trying to get a program together here where we have at, a, at an event to have just a bunch of lawnmowers out there and you bring your old lawnmower in, as long as it starts, you, you can swap it out for very little money and you can get yourself a brand new electric mower and they're great, let me tell you. Yeah, it's the Ego brand. Yeah. I think you can see them at Lowe's or 
Home Depot, but it's, it's a substantial rebate and it's it's high quality equipment. It comes with good batteries and you can uh, you can get a pretty good sized yard done on a single charge. So it's it's uh, it's not cheap equipment. You want to talk on transit authority? Did we have a meeting? It was it was. Um... I just thought that it was canceled because of the holiday. Well, the, the activities right. talked about us, but the actual meeting, I think, because of the holidays, because it meets on the third or fourth okay. uh, Tuesday, okay. but because of the holidays, I think it got canceled. Okay. Contract cities, uh, we just had some legislative uh, prep work. They're up there right now, so I'm missing that uh, legislative meeting up there, Sacramento. So uh, I'll get some feedback and uh, give that to you guys. Uh, Audit committee uh, was not, we did not meet this month. Investment committee. There was uh, no meeting, was there? Investment folks? No? Not since last council meeting. Yes. High Desert Corridors, that was also dark this past month. Uh, uh, no, we, we had a, um, uh, we had the, uh, we, we had the, uh, we had a phone meeting. And uh, uh, did you want to uh, help us out of that one? On the, what we were working on on the High Desert Corridor? What was the, uh, that was the. Uh, we're working on the private activity bond? Right, that's right. So that's one where, um, where we um, we made the recommendation for um, the one billion in private equity bonds uh, for the Brightline Virgin Trains program, and uh, you'll stand by. You'll hear more on that. Uh, League of Cities. Uh, we didn't have a meeting this past month, but we have a meeting on February eighteenth. Is it, Mr. Fifteenth? <laughs> yeah, it's got, I believe it's February eighteenth. We'll advise the rest of the council. Our uh, local representatives will should all be here, and or their their rep, and uh, we'll probably have it maybe at the cultural center or maybe Legacy Commons. But we'll be the host, and we'll have this is the time for all those guys from Mammoth all the way out to Twenty Nine Palms to come to Palm Beach. So, so uh, sanitation district. Um, I don't uh, I don't believe we had a sanitation district meeting. I think it was dark this month. Yeah, I think it was dark. Yeah, it was dark this month as well. Um, NCTC, we're, we're not meeting until next month. Dark. Recycle water, sir? Uh, I think that meeting was dark as well. Yeah, December is a light month. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Southern California Association of Governments. Uh, the, um, we had the uh, economic summit down in LA in, in lieu of a uh, board meeting. Uh, and uh, that was just, a, a, we're going over with a lot of the, um, the uh, economic gurus about what's going on in the, in the region and what's happening nationwide that's impacting the region. And uh, so the reports are, are all there on the SCAG website. They're very informative. If you're having trouble sleeping, that's one of them to pick up. <laughs> okay. Um, do we have any of uh, the... Um, um, we didn't have sister cities. I think they just had the Christmas party. And then uh, the prison committee. Yeah? Dark. It was dark this month? Okay. So it was a dark month. Okay. Uh, cannabis committee, we did not meet last month. But we got one coming up in a week or two. It's on the city website. I think it's next week, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So if anybody's interested on Cannabis Committee, uh, so we'll have some, uh, that should be some spirited dialogue at that meeting because <laughs> that's where we're going to be start opening it up to our uh, committee members to start uh, going through some other things. And just, right. a, just a question about can other council members attend uh, as long as they don't participate? Um, okay. I think I think we've had a the issue council? with that, yeah, the uh, Mr. DeSazy, on uh, on the uh, ad hoc committee. Uh, we have two council members on that. It's a notice meeting. How does that work then uh, if a third council member shows up? They well, they can't be on the committee. Oh, but, uh, but the public they really shouldn't be making any comments. They can sit and listen. Is it a public meeting, or is it just the members public of the meeting? Yeah, it's no, it's public. Brown yeah. It's a Brown Act meeting. So. Okay. But, um, you know, I would, I would caution you to even do that, even though a third member is sitting there, just okay. because. Um, right, it's different when we're going to somebody else's meeting. We could all go to somebody else's meeting, right. but it becomes a little more awkward, I know. When, right, when but uh, okay. the committee, yeah, the committee is actually going to be making recommendations, taking action right. on this, even though it's going to be the council that adopts right. it. But if you've got three council members sitting there and they're all shaking their head yes or shaking no, then... You know, you, you're formed a consensus. That, yeah. you know, no, I'm not sure if we can get a report from you guys. When you have your yeah, it's, it's coming. Yeah. Trust me. Okay. All right, so let's. So now that we've gone down the list, let's go down the dais. Uh, who wants to start with uh, other activities? Let's start, Mr. Bishop. Uh, yeah, it was. It was um, 
a lighter month, obviously, because it was December, but we had the Chamber Christmas Parade. Um, most recently, I attended the uh, groundbreaking at Yellen over at Juan's District for the Shade Structures. That was very well attended, and and uh, it's great to see that Juan fought for something that he was very passionate about, and it paid off. I think that it sets a good example, and I think it was impressive uh, that he was able to get that done for his uh, for his district. And uh, chamber luncheon today, where Steve spoke, uh, a couple of various things. Nothing too crazy. It was it was a lighter month because of December. Um, anything else from you guys? No, okay, we'll go. No, I'm done. Mr. Lola. Well, um, let's see. Yesterday, you and I attended the um, ribbon cutting for the World Food. Right. And uh, I thought that was great. It's a it's a neat little store. It's got all kinds of different uh, foods. Um, it's over in front of um, Burlington. It's over near Burlington, kind of next door, or Sears across outlet. the street. Yeah, by the Sears outlets, across the street from the uh, mall entrance, kind of where the gas station is there. Uh, if you know where Yoshinoya is, just uh, just the other side of the freeway. Yeah, uh, interesting place, and uh, it filled a vacancy. I think that place was vacant for quite a while, if I'm not mistaken. I think so it was the three-day flooring place. Was it for a while? I think so. Yeah. So, in any event, that's something that uh, is good to see business coming into the uh, city. Um, not a whole lot to report. Just been busy, but uh, with other uh, with other matters. Yeah, it was a nice restaurant. Med mostly Mediterranean groceries. Yeah. When I gather, very specialty yeah. items. Good stuff. If you can't read Russian or Armenian, so yeah. Uh, and it's, it's some of the some of the they have some pretty unique uh, vegetables and things over there, but they have grape leaves, so they are they do have goma. <laughs> so. And I did attend the. Um, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce uh, luncheon today, where you spoke, and uh, very very well received. Uh, very comprehensive comments by you. I heard good comments afterwards. I had to run. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Okay. Graham. I'll, I'll go next again with December being a light month because of the holidays. Uh, but uh, the yelling, uh, groundbreaking, really uh, great attendance, I thought. Uh, I know some of the council members couldn't attend, and they, they told me the reasons why, and I do understand that. Um, thank you all for working on that project and for the support from the council. As Mayor Le as Mayor Hobauer said, it is not a big deal, but it really is a big deal uh, because now we're going to be able to enjoy more of our park experience, live under the shade. I know it's December, it's the winter, come it's summer. cold, but come summer, they'll be ready. Um, thanks for all the hard work the staff did and the support from the council. Um, just looking forward to a great new year. That's, that's it for me. Yeah, it was pretty uneventful for, for me also. Um, we all did the, the workshop that Marsha was talking about, and I attended the, uh, the veterans' breakfast on Christmas morning, so that we thought we could thank Just missed you guys. We showed up there. I did the old guy thing and went out to breakfast that morning, and I found out you guys had just left. Yeah, so. yeah. So mostly it was just the socializing with the groups and the community and constituents and wishing everybody a happy holiday and spreading good cheer. So that was it. Good. Great. Well, um, so uh, like most of you, I went to the parades. Uh, we went out there. We used the spoon to do the groundbreaking at the uh, Yellen Park. <laughs> <Sounds cool. laughs> um, the Brightline tour. Um, Mr. Bishop, you were on that with me, weren't you, sir? Yes, I was. And the uh, uh, city manager was there. Um, again, folks, um, this was amazing. You guys have got to take a look at uh, what Brightline is doing back in, uh, in, um, in Florida. They're running that train. It's a really first-class experience. It's like arriving at a hotel when you get to those train stations. It's not like arriving at a train station or a bus station. It's amazing. Uh, the trains themselves are, are, are very nice. Their first class is not that much more but they have like an airline service that comes down the aisles and takes care of you. Uh, we learned a lot. We uh, were able to provide a lot of good information back to the uh, operators back there. Um, they weren't aware of all the new engineers and new jobs up here. They were very impressed with that. And we let them know that we're standing ready, willing, and able to do what we have to do to help them make that uh, other jump from Victorville to here. Because with one team in Vegas and two teams in L.A., we're the connection. So. Um, yeah, that was that was a great yeah. trip. We learned a lot, and we saw the promise that 
that rail has the technology, the class, and the quality that they're trying to bring. It's just not, uh, it's not like an economy rail. They're bringing luxury and class. And, 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 and their standard and the, rate is yeah. amazing as well. Their standard um, ticket, you know, it's still, again, you still feel like you're going into a, uh, like a an West End or a, or, a, or a JW Marriott or something when you're going into their, their stations and, and you walk right through. TSA can learn a thing or three from these guys. That was you gonna zip, be my question. You zip yeah. right through that security. They do have this this high security screening system. Everything and everybody is screened. And it's uh, there's no you're not clogged up at the gate. You're not having to take off your shoes. It was it was impressive. Yeah, it was. And with the Virgin partnership, it's going to be exciting to see how fast this thing takes off. It, it really is. So I also uh, attended the uh, installation up at. Uh, Antelope Valley uh, Healthcare District. Uh, I was asked to come swear in my friend and uh, personal physician, uh, Dr. Perrazzo, and uh, that was uh, that was a nice uh, nice little shindig they did. Uh, they had the AV Board of Trade breakfast. Uh, there's always some good information coming out of that, and uh, the um, um, the relationship there I think is improving. Uh, and I want to thank Mike and the uh, Curtis and the guys over at Economic Development for their participation over there. That's really helping. Um, uh, with the um, regional uh, partnerships and the regional outreach, so, so, but, uh, and then uh, I uh, had the opportunity to uh, spend a little time with our new uh, sheriff. We had gone to the sheriff's uh, um, swearing-in ceremony, and then the Contract Cities Association had a, uh, a reception downtown, and uh, the uh, in-between other meetings, I was able to dash down there, have a have a chat with the sheriff, and uh, talk to him about. Uh, our staffing issues uh, and our needs here, uh, our partnerships with him, uh, about some other law enforcement concepts that are being proposed, and how we can uh, how how can how can we all do a better job? Because there's some pretty amazing numbers about to come out. So, uh, and there was a whole lot of other man. I had about a billion meetings this month, and I don't want to bore you with all those. So, but uh, anything else, Mr. City uh, Manager? It's your turn. Thank you. Next. No, okay, sorry. thank you. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Jim. No, seriously. No, I'm fine. I, uh, I don't have anything else to add to that. I think uh, uh, we had a, a great What month. did we miss on the Brightline that Austin and I miss? There's, Other there's, than the grapefruit spray. There's, there's one more thing I wanted to add on Brightline. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. It's one, one, one thing I definitely learned when I was there is that it's just not a high-speed rail company. It's, it's a high-speed rail company that's centered around real estate development. Mm -hmm which is a big part of it, and the funding mechanism. When you go in there, there's shops, there's kiosks, there's rental stations, and, and when they bring the rail, they plan to build and develop yeah. around it because that's gonna be a key component. So when that, when that rail does come, it's gonna bring the economic development with it. And, and I think that's the big yeah. component of how they're able to offer the rides at the price that they're doing. It was amazing when you saw the, the before and after pictures of that dumpy neighborhood that they built that thing in and they, they have these office class A office towers there, and they're getting ready to build a super tower there. So yeah. So the whole idea is, is that that the development and the, the rail kind of go side by side, and one feeds the other, and it was impressive. And I'm really looking forward to yeah. some of that coming good. here in our city. What did we miss on that, Jim? I think a couple things. So our transverting development workshop, we'll dive into that. That's what we've been really working on for the past several years. Um, first with California high-speed rail and now with this project adding to it. Uh, I'd say the one thing that uh, the other experience that the council didn't have, but one of our staff flew into Fort Lauderdale, took an Uber from Fort Lauderdale, it took an hour and 40 minutes to get down to Miami and about $60 on the Uber. And then going back, he took the train back to Fort Lauderdale, the, the Brightline train. It took 20 minutes. It was, I think it was a $25 fare to go on the train and, and sh sip champagne on the way back. Uh, not, not a bad ride, was it? <laughs> yeah. I do have one question um, for those of you that attended the Katie Hill meeting. Oh, did, yeah. did anything productive come out of that? I wasn't able to go because I had to work. So. Well, I, uh, I kind of got the last minute call on that thing. I got to thank the staff for helping us throw together the uh, material and, and, and the venue on that. Uh, Mr. Loa and uh, Mr. Creel were in the audience as well. Um, the, uh, the Congresswoman staff, uh, um, I, was, I was up there with them. I think that once you got past some of the, uh, um, 
some some of what we all kind of expected was some of the uh, the rhetorical you know uh, uh, politics that um, that that, it, that it kind of lent itself to. Once we got down to it, I think the basic uh, uh, message was: there's a whole lot that we're all agreeing on, and we're spending way too much time arguing about the stuff that we don't agree on. And we and we've got people out there that are being forced to work with no pay at a lot of these federal jobs, and that we're having a lot of uh, some of these guys are had leaves canceled, medical leaves canceled, things like that. It was uh, we had. Um, you guys didn't talk about anything directly affecting the city of Palmdale. Yeah, there was a good presentation. I can give you a copy of uh, of the of the notes that, that I had presented. And Mr. Uh, could could you distribute that to the balance of the council so I don't get in trouble with the uh, city attorney here? Yeah, I can I can put that information out to the council. Uh, it was something we put together about a week ago uh, in preparation to give Congresswoman Hill some talking points when she was back in Washington. Uh, and we're adding to that as we go in regard to impacts on s local small business and so forth, because the, the impacts as the government stays shut down are going to be exponential. They're, they're just now starting off. Most people can hold out a few weeks. After that, uh, it starts to go, go bad really quickly. And so we'll, we'll get some more information on that. It was uh, and some some somebody uh, I don't know whether Hills off somebody was live streaming it so somewhere it was, somewhere, somewhere. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure where but all, some all things it's, it's was somewhere. on Facebook so it's on Facebook yeah it's yeah. on Facebook yeah so I uh, I think Hills staff somebody somebody was, was there had something going and they were a bunch of cameras and things like that but uh, but um, it was um, uh, the Association of Federal Government Employees was there the uh, the uh, gentleman representing the uh, federal peace officers out at the uh, uh, at the prison uh, was there. Uh, we had the gentleman from National Park Service was there as well. So each of us had a couple of minutes, but it was primarily it was it was a uh, it was Katie's opportunity, Congresswoman Hill's opportunity to um, to visit the district because she just got sworn in and uh, to kind of meet and say here here's what were you guys seeing that's happening. People asked a few questions. So it was, I, bet, I thought it was, I thought it was good. I thought it was good. So, all right, City Attorney, do you have anything else to, to add today? Uh, no, sir. Okay, nice hat, by the way. I, I missed out on that. I just got a little tiny dot. So, oh, okay. yeah. All right. All right. Uh, so I'd like to thank everybody for being here. We are going to adjourn to February fifth, Marsha. City Council requested. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> any other, any other items? Slip right through. Almost got it. Almost got it. Anybody have anything that uh, they want to bring up for uh, uh, to get on the city manager's radar here? Uh, uh, I've, got, I've got a, I've got one. Um, I handed off a book to uh, our city manager today about uh, phasing into a no-kill shelter or a partnership with um, an animal rescue group. I know we've had a workshop on this a few months back, but I know as our contract comes up with. Uh, Animal services. I want to take a look at what we can do to start phasing into this because if those the prices don't come down or we can't control the cost of this thing, we got to be proactive rather than reactive. Especially uh, going into the next couple of years financially, we're going to have to be as uh, wise as we can. As much as we love the volunteers here, the the bureaucrats are kind of driving us all nuts. They, um, I, I had missed the workshop um, when they came in, but I understand there wasn't a whole lot of dialogue. Uh, Not so much. Can, yeah, but they, they gave quite a bit of uh, feedback uh, at the contract cities meeting, which is probably why they didn't say a whole lot when they came here, and it uh, uh, it, it didn't go over well. And uh, I mean, most most communities are looking at getting their rates tripled, uh, and uh, they're it's it's not a good scenario. And I agree. We need to talk with ASPCA. We need to try to get the other rescue groups coordinated. I think we need to ask them for that property that's next door back, yeah. so we can do something with that property. Because and, uh, they don't they don't have the money to do anything with it. It's just going to sit there as a dirt lot. So I don't see why we don't do something with it. And I've uh, I've, I've located a consultant that's worked with numerous other cities that's helped them transition into their own thing and shown that it's been not only beneficial to the animals but also get it to him. Let's. I handed it off to him to today. Perfect. For me, I wanted to uh, make a suggestion. Um, I think that it would be a great idea to have a council retreat 
um, something that I think would be very beneficial. I, I say that because when I was at the school district, we did a couple of retreats, and we actually um, did it at a location where there was an interest at the, for the district at the time. For instance, we went over to the Oakland area to look at uh, some school facilities where they are having, they, they were introducing kind of a new uh, technology and new uh, furniture for the kids to learn to make them be more participate, participate more in, in, in the classroom. So by having those kind of new furniture, the kids are able to move around. Maybe something for us, I don't know, visit a smart city, uh, since we're uh, working on yeah, that. Yeah, the problem is, is, you know, I looked into that when I was looking at running, and the issue is, is that with the changes in the state law, you can't have that outside of the jurisdiction. Then so you could go to conferences, here. you could do something like that, but so it would just end up being a, like another workshop or something like that. So it could be a workshop, that's a good yeah. idea. So, I mean, then, we don't have to call it a retreat, we yeah. can do it a workshop. But I think that that will uh, facilitate um, the council's dynamics, um, being able to look at something that we are working on, uh, physically looking at it. Um, and Councilman Bet Betancourt even suggested that we have a group uh, picture, a council picture, uh, for all five of us. Uh, instead of having the individual pictures, maybe have uh, one for the entire council. Uh, I think that that will be something uh, new. I appreciate the fact that you're having us be part of the, the recognition. But if you take a look, at the, the picture things. situations are changing. And that changed, I know that you are lined up. Yeah, all five, you look uh, at the other facilities. I do appreciate that as well. Um, well. Maybe for some of the other satellite facilities, there could be a group could picture. Do a, a little, could be like a little fireplace going there. We could have some marshmallows. Uh, no. So, <laughs> so <laughs> again, it doesn't uh, have to be a retreat. If there is some uh, a workshop, uh, schedule it, agendize it, there is nothing wrong with that. I'm not familiar what uh, issues you're talking about. But yeah, it's, it's, the, it's it's some of the places gotten in a jam over there. Okay. So. Well, we, we never did. Maybe, so uh, maybe maybe a city attorney and a city manager can look at that, and we can uh, individually have those discussions, and they can work something off along those lines. Just look at it. Yeah, I was going to say that the rules, they change them every year. Why don't you take a look at it and get back to us yeah. the state of the art and yeah. Yeah. Find, yeah. Out what, find out what Budget. it is this week. <laughs> uh, that's that's what I have. Cool. One thing to play off that, which I think could be beneficial, and I've seen other cities do this before, is a, a workshop or a roundtable discussion with us, the council, and all the department heads. Or, or the planning commission too. Uh, that or the planning workshop. commission, so yeah. we can we can get we can hear from them in an open forum discussion what. Uh, yeah. What their issues are, or they could use some more help, or or where they could do better. I think just just so you guys know, and uh, I know the city manager, uh, I kind of alluded to this to him. I'm trying to make it a point to stop in at each of the different board meetings that, that are going on, and then the different school boards and different agencies that are out here. Um, I uh, I've got I put calls in right after the election uh, to the supervisor's office, to uh, Santa Clarita, and to Lancaster. I already had a meeting uh, uh, with, uh, with Lancaster, and I'm, I'm waiting for the meeting with, uh, um, with the supervisor's office. Still trying to uh, get that coordinated with her schedule, and I'm um, um, uh, likewise working on uh, coordinating that schedule with uh, Marcia down there in uh, Santa Clarita. So just to kind of find out what are, a lot of these things, that are, the problems aren't stopping at Avenue M or at Agua Dulce. So. Ms. Betancourt, did you have anything you want to add for this evening? Other than our photo, I think it's a good idea. I like that idea. So, okay. All right. So we'll go ahead. We're going to adjourn. I can go now to number fifteen. I'm good. Uh, we're going to adjourn to uh, February fifth, seven o'clock. Uh, we're not no closed session, sir. Are we are we going to do that till five o'clock, Mr. Uh, City Attorney? We stay up until the five. Closed session to five. So we're actually going to adjourn to. 5 o'clock on February 5th. Okay? We all good? Thank you. All right. Thank you Thanks. very much.